On your left. Remember that feeling when Marvel gave us Avengers Endgame in 2019? It was like the culmination of everything the MCU had been building up to for over a decade. We watched in awe as every superhero from Iron Man to the Guardians assembled for the most epic showdown in comic book movie history. And man, did it deliver. But then, what happened next? Well, Marvel had a bit of a dilemma. Two of its biggest stars, Iron Man and Captain America, were gone. Tony made the ultimate sacrifice, and Steve decided to hang up his shield, living out his days as Old Man Rogers. The MCU, for the first time in years, was starting from scratch. Then came Disney+. Plus. Marvel shifted gears, pumping out a ton of new content at lightning speed. More shows, more movies, more everything. In just three years, we saw 10 movies and 10 series drop. A rapid fire rollout of stories. You'd think this would be a dream come true for fans, right? More Marvel, more fun. But surprisingly, something felt off. So what went wrong? For over a decade, Marvel did something remarkable. It gave us heroes we could truly connect with, especially Iron Man and Captain America, the leaders of the Avengers. But this wasn't just about flashy suits and shield throws, it was about real growth. You can't beat them hand to hand. Transformation and sacrifice. Take Tony Stark, for instance. When we first met him, he was nothing more than a reckless billionaire playboy with zero responsibility. But after his life took a sharp turn, being captured by terrorists and forced to confront his own mortality, something shifted. He wasn't just the guy with money and charm anymore. He was a man who had to take control of his life for the sake of others. As we watched Tony over the years, we didn't just see a superhero in a suit. We saw a man battling his own demons, his arrogance, his narcissism, the way he put himself first. These were flaws he had to overcome. And slowly but surely, we saw him grow. Remember when he took that nuke and flew it through a portal in the Avengers to save New York? That wasn't the Tony Stark we met in 2008. That was a man who had learned to put others before himself. By the time Avengers Endgame rolled around, Tony was a full-fledged hero, one willing to risk it all for the greater good. His self-sacrifice, the ultimate move to snap Thanos and save the universe, Iron Man, wasn't just about the flashy moment. It was about the journey. The man who once only cared about himself gave up everything to save the people he loved. But Marvel didn't stop at just giving us a heroic Tony Stark. They gave us a human Tony, a man who had fears, who loved his daughter and wife, and who, for a moment, was willing to walk away from back. being You're Iron Man. That you won't need this red skirt, I won't he didn't want to risk losing the life he had built after the snap. His reluctance to help the Avengers at first felt so real. A hero struggling with fear, just like any of us would. That's why fans connected so deeply with Tony Stark. He wasn't just a perfect superhero, he was flawed, human, and relatable. And when he made that final sacrifice, we all felt like we lost someone who had been part of our lives for over a decade. You can rest now. On the flip side, we have Steve Rogers, AKA Captain America. Introduced shortly after Iron Man, Steve couldn't have been more different from Tony. While Tony was all ego and charm, Steve was pure selflessness. He wasn't even physically fit enough to be a soldier. Yet he wanted nothing more than to serve his country during World War II. To get there, he took the experimental super soldier serum, transforming into Captain America. But even after gaining strength, Steve never lost sight of who he was at his core, a man who would sacrifice everything for the greater good. He proved this when he crashed that plane full of deadly weapons into the ocean, I gotta put her in the water. willing to give his life for the world. Though he survived, what we saw over the years was Steve stepping into his role as a leader, a confident, unwavering symbol of what was right. His journey was about holding on to his values, no matter how much the world around him changed. Marvel gave us two heroes, one who had to learn selflessness and one who embodied it from the start. But they both became the emotional heartbeat of the MCU. And when their stories came to an end in Endgame, fans felt a real sense of loss, like saying goodbye to old friends. When the stories of Iron Man and Captain America ended, Marvel faced a new challenge. 
finding fresh stars to carry the franchise forward. Enter Falcon, the loyal sidekick and trusted friend of Captain America. While fans were familiar with him, it's safe to say that not many knew much about his past. He was just a veteran with a troubled history, but not yet a fully fleshed out character in the MCU. At the end of Avengers Endgame, when Steve handed his shield to Falcon, it felt symbolic, but also raised a big question. How would Marvel transform Falcon from a supporting character into the new Captain America? Could Sam Wilson, a man who had always fought beside Captain America, actually step into the role of being Captain America himself? Cue the arrival of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. The series aimed to address this very issue, and it did so by diving into Sam's life like never before. From the very first episode, we started to get a glimpse of Falcon's backstory, including his family life back in Louisiana. But the real heart of the series wasn't just in showing us where Falcon came from. It was in his reluctance to accept the shield and the immense responsibility that came with it. Sam's hesitation to embrace the role of Captain America was understandable. How do you live up to Steve Rogers' legacy? How do you step into the shoes of a legend? The series did a good job of exploring this fear, but it couldn't shake the shadow of Steve Rogers. Throughout the series, Steve's name was mentioned over and over again. You, Steve, but Steve is gone. It doesn't matter what Steve thought. Almost to the point where it felt like the Falcon and the Winter Soldier was more about Captain America's legacy than about Falcon's journey. This hesitation bled into the storytelling. Much of the series became a meditation on who Steve Rogers was, rather than who Falcon could be. And when Sam finally did take up the shield near the end of the series, the moment felt rushed, as though the audience wasn't fully brought along for the emotional ride. There was no dramatic buildup, like we saw with Tony Stark or Steve Rogers, no singular moment where Sam decided on screen to embrace the role of hero. Tony's transformation happened after he was kidnapped by terrorists. Steve Rogers proved himself when he willingly sacrificed his life to stop a disaster. But for Falcon, it felt like the decision to become Captain America happened almost off screen, and we were merely informed about it afterward. Even in that final decision, the narrative still leaned heavily on the legacy of Steve Rogers. You've got to do better. As a result, Falcon's character often felt like he was still playing second fiddle in a series meant to establish him as a leading man. He never fully broke away from the perception that he was Steve Rogers' sidekick, still living in the shadow of the original Captain America. In fairness, it's not entirely Sam Wilson's fault. Marvel had over a decade and several films to make us embrace Steve Rogers as Captain America. Falcon, on the other hand, was given just one miniseries. On top of that, Steve had just closed out his time as Captain America in one of the most epic and emotional conclusions in MCU history. How could anyone, even a fan favorite like Falcon, easily pick up the mantle after that? In many ways, it wasn't just about Falcon proving himself as a worthy successor to Captain America. It was about convincing the audience that anyone could ever truly replace Steve Rogers. And that's a tough task for any character, especially one who spent most of his time as a supporting player. After Avengers Endgame, Marvel unleashed a tidal wave of fresh faces. Shang-Chi, the Eternals, the Marvels, ushering in what should have been the next great phase of the MCU. But instead of building on the foundation of its beloved characters, Marvel seems to have traded depth for quantity, and the once tightly woven narrative now feels scattered. Before Endgame, the MCU was like a finely tuned symphony, centered around its core six, Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, Hulk, Black Widow, and Hawkeye. Over a decade, Marvel cultivated these heroes, watching them evolve not just as individuals, but as a team. Their stories were deeply personal, intricately intertwined, and more importantly, fans were invested in their journey. By the time we reached Endgame, it wasn't just another superhero movie, it was the culmination of 10 years of emotional stakes. Now with so many new heroes flooding the MCU, it feels like we're meeting new faces, but not sticking around long enough to truly get to know them. Where's the new heart of the MCU? Who is its moral compass now that Tony Stark and Steve Rogers are gone? The problem isn't that these new characters are boring or irrelevant. Take Shang-Chi, for example. In his debut, Shang-Chi starts as a man trying to outrun his past, only to find himself forced to confront it head on. He's not just another flashy hero. His backstory, growing up in the shadow of a terrorist father, struggling with his identity, 
makes him one of the most compelling new characters in recent years. We watched him transform from a lost soul into a man ready to step into his power and face the trauma of his upbringing. You trained your son to be a killer. Is this what you wanted? On its own, Shang-Chi's story works beautifully. It's heartfelt, grounded, and relatable. But here's the issue. Since Shang-Chi premiered in 2021, his character seems to be floating in a vacuum. The interconnectedness that once defined the MCU feels frayed. There's been no real attempt to integrate Shang-Chi or many of the other new heroes into the larger universe. The characters exist, but their relevance? That's still uncertain. What made the MCU extraordinary was how every story, every character fit into the grand design. Crossovers weren't just gimmicks, they were essential. Characters didn't just meet, they clashed, collaborated, and evolved together. This constant weaving of stories is what set the MCU apart from other franchises. And no two characters represented this better than Captain America and Iron Man. From their very first meeting, Tony Stark and Steve Rogers were at odds. It wasn't just about strategy or who gave the orders. It was about their very core beliefs. Tony's brash, self-centered genius stood in sharp contrast to Steve's unwavering sense of duty and sacrifice. Take that off, what are you? Genius billionaire playboy from that topic. Over time, their rivalry became more than just conflict. It became the emotional engine of the MCU. Whether it was Tony's refusal to follow Steve's lead or Steve's ability to push Tony towards selflessness, their relationship was the backbone of the Avengers. These clashes led to some of the MCU's most defining moments, none more impactful than their ultimate fallout in Captain America Civil War. It wasn't just a fight between two heroes, it was the unraveling of a friendship built on mutual respect, but strained by their differing worldviews. Moments like this gave the MCU emotional weight, keeping us glued to every storyline. And let's not forget the devastating emotional beats in Endgame like Spider-Man's tearful goodbye to Tony Stark. That wasn't just a hero mourning a fallen mentor. It was the culmination of years of character development, relationships, and sacrifice. It felt real. It hit home. Post Endgame, however, the MCU feels like it's lost that magic. Instead of focusing on how these new characters can grow together, they all seem to be following their own paths, barely crossing into each other's worlds. At times, it feels like these characters don't even exist in the same universe anymore. The cohesion that once defined the MCU, that sense of a shared journey, is missing. And without that, it's hard to feel the same level of emotional connection we once had. And guess what, Cap? We lost. You weren't there. The heroes aren't the only ones facing an identity crisis in the post-Endgame era. One of the key elements that made the MCU work so brilliantly was having a central villain as powerful and compelling as Thanos. For over seven years, Marvel carefully built up the Infinity Saga, methodically planting the seeds of an impending battle with the Mad Titan. From the first Avengers film, we saw glimpses of Thanos. And over the years, the Infinity Stones served as markers, connecting the various MCU stories into a larger, cohesive narrative. The result? A buildup so immense, so epic, that when Infinity War and Endgame finally arrived, it felt like a collision of worlds fans had been anticipating for years. But now, in the wake of Thanos' defeat, there's a glaring void. A universe without its grand villain feels scattered. Enter Kong the Conqueror, a villain capable of rewriting time itself. Kong could be the next major threat to tie the entire MCU together. But there's a problem. We've only seen him in one movie. And beyond his brief appearance, we have yet to feel any true connection between Kong's storyline and the other MCU characters. There's no sense of impending doom or a ticking clock like there was with Thanos. To make matters worse, behind the scenes complications have disrupted Kong's trajectory. Due to some unforeseen issues with the actor playing Kang, Marvel seems to be reassessing its plans for the character, delaying the anticipated buildup of the next major villain. This means that even if Kang remains the intended threat, he hasn't had the time to establish his dominance or weave his way into the fabric of the MCU like Thanos once did. In the meantime, whispers of another iconic villain have emerged, Doctor Doom. And here's where things get really interesting. Doctor Doom, one of Marvel's most notorious villains, is said to be stepping into the spotlight with none other than Robert Downey Jr. potentially taking on the role. Yes, the Robert Downey Jr. The same man who brought Iron Man to life and carried the MCU on his shoulders for over a decade. 
the idea of Downey Jr. transforming into Doom could be either a masterstroke or a risky move. Will fans who grew up loving him as Tony Stark be able to embrace him as this dark new force? Can he shed the beloved Iron Man persona and dive into the twisted, calculating world of Victor Von Doom? There's no denying the talent of Robert Downey Jr., but the question lingers. Can Marvel successfully recast him in such a polarizing role without alienating fans who still see him as the heart of the Avengers? For those who adored Tony Stark's arc, watching Downey take on a villain like Doctor Doom could be both thrilling and heartbreaking. And here's the real issue. Even with these intriguing new villains entering the stage, we're still missing that big reason to root for the heroes. Marvel's latest outings often leave us wondering, what's the point of it all? Will the heroes of the next phase face an enemy as monumental as Thanos? Or will we as fans be left contemplating after each new release, asking ourselves the same question, where is this all going? But in the end still, we're not ready to let Marvel go.